The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said, Woe to you who build the memorials of the prophets whom your fathers killed. Consequently, you bear witness and give consent to the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them, and you do the building. Therefore the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles, some of them they will kill and persecute, in order that this generation might be charged with the blood of all the prophets, since shed since the foundation of the world. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who died between the altar and the temple building. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be charged with their blood. Woe to you, scholars of the law, you have taken away the key of, the, of knowledge. You yourselves did not enter, and you stopped those trying to enter. When Jesus left, the scribes and Pharisees began to act with hostility towards him and to interrogate him about many things, for they were plotting to catch him at something he might say. The Gospel of the Lord. So, as some of you may know, I am teaching in the Fine Arts Department, Graphic Design, and something you may not know is I'm also a, a painter, both in digital and oil uh, media. And one of the things that happens to artists quite frequently is the dreaded block. You just kind of get stuck. And to be honest, I'm kind of in one of those right now with a few of my paintings. Uh, and it's really, really, really frustrating because you sit at the easel, you sit at your device, and just kind of stare at it. You don't know what to do. Writers um, have writer's block as well. And I'm sure there, this happens in every other aspect of our lives. Prayer, this happens quite often. You just sit there and can't hear anything. But what do we do? That's, I think, what our readings are getting at. When we find ourselves stuck, when we find ourselves right up against that block, that roadblock, what do we do? Do we give up? Well, that's rarely the answer. Do we turn our attention towards things like anger and outrage? Well, that's clearly what the, uh, what the Pharisees and uh, priests are doing towards Jesus. I don't think that's the answer either. So what do we do? Well, we do what Jesus continually tells us to do, follow. It may not seem like we're going anywhere all the time, but if we trust that what Jesus and what St. Paul tells us is true, he says, in Christ we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the, with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. They are there. We are overwhelmed by the grace of God, poured out so freely. Just because we can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. So again, what do we do? We move forward trusting, again, that what God has said is true, that those graces are there. Now, it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be sunshine and rainbows. Times get tough. Granted, sure. But again, what do we do when that happens? And I think our response is clear, just to have faith, not to grit our teeth and pretend that everything is fine when it's clearly not, but to have something deeper, a Christian hope, um, that we don't actively try to stop people from trying to enter that gate like these Pharisees, but to welcome, to be open, to open our own hearts to the love of Christ.